Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Send me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst, a callus's path. Oh yeah, so we're having a nice little evening with a callus. Y'all, let's go ahead and just jump right back into that, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> are you ready? I asked the wolf, turning around to meet his eyes. <laughs> he says nothing. Instead, he lies on his bed's left side. <laughs> They knew what they were doing when they made this. I go up and lay myself beside him. Just as expected, it's a tight fit. Should we... Cuddle? Is that what people often... Is that what people often do in these situations? Huh? That's an odd question. It almost makes you think that he... Hey, Callus, is this your first time sharing the bed with someone? He doesn't respond, and even if I can't see it, I know for a fact that his cheeks must be as red as tomatoes. Uh, would it be a bad thing if it was? There was a certain sadness in his voice as he asked me, as if he felt bad for not having his, this basic knowledge. No, it's not a bad thing. I'm just surprised, that's all. The wolf is lying on his side, giving his back to me. So if I'm doing this, I'll have to be, I'll have to be the big spoon. Do you want me to lead the way? It's not such a big deal. You just... Let me hug you from the back, that's all. Okay, he says, and the nods remaining still like a stone. I turned to my side, lifting my leg, lifting my left arm and placing it over him. Meanwhile, I put my other arm under the pillow. Then, I pull him closer. He yelps and jumps from the sudden imp sudden contact, clearly not expecting us to be this close. Are you comfortable? The wolf silently nods and shuffles closer to me, making his back touch my front. I'm immediately met by his body heat and fur fluffiness. It feels nice as being this close to him. The wolf smells like the bathing products we were given, we were, we were given with, but I try not to linger too much on it. After all, I'm not... I'm trying not to make him comfortable. Although his natural musk is still there, and I can't help but take a little whiff. Hmm. This is pleasant. The sound of his voice surprised me, as I wasn't expecting him to comment on it. You're oddly warm for someone your size. Is it due to your fur? It's due to your fur, isn't it? Yeah. My fur is actually made for cold weather. Have I ever told you about the time that when Mr. Biscotti and I visited the mountains of the West? Not that I recall. Will you tell me about it? Gladly. And just like that, we spent the night talking to each other. That is, until the pillows finally won and he fell asleep in my arms. I soon try to follow, but after everything that has happened today, I don't think I'll get a good night's rest. But I might as well try. Ooh, as expected, I didn't get much sleep. I swear I tried. My brain was restless. I've been awake for at least three hours by now. Could be more, could be less, but I'm not too sure myself. I haven't been keeping count. Point is, I just couldn't sleep. Too many things in my head, I guess. So here I am, all alone in the middle of the night, staring at the diary Mr. Biscotti left me with nothing but a candle and to light the room. I keep my eyes on the book, inspecting it as best I can with the amount of light that I have. That was a weird noise. The leather feels good against my paws. It's certainly not the cheap kind. The pages are also of great quality, thick and won't rip easily, at least as far as I can tell. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on diaries or whatever. I just think this is too much. I mean, how much did we did even pay for this? We should have used that money for something more important. I don't deserve this anyway. I sigh and then place the, be the, place the book back on the table, scratching my head as I try to feel some sort of comfort. Right under my left ear, the secret spot in which I've always loved to be scratched at. Doing it by myself feels a little lame, but it reminds me of my mom. So I do it when I'm feeling lonely or sad. I need to pull it together, I say, trying to calm my nerves. After all, I can't break down now. Tomorrow is a very important day and I need to be ready. I don't feel like sleeping, though. To be honest, I'm more awake than ever. Perhaps I should stop moping around and do something useful for a change. <laughs> or at least I think that's what Mr. Biscotti would say. Oh, my roommate's laughing. Huh, I guess it's only you and me, buddy. I say as I lift the book and open it. I write my name in the first diary page, and then I rip it off. Then I place it in a little pocket. The diary has a way of marking it as mine. One second, now let me turn the fan up a little bit. Uh... There we go. There we go. Uh, guess I could also pee on it, but I'm not that kind of canine. Anyway, time to get creative. Alrighty. The codex has been added. 
The following day, a callus hooked me up from the, from, from the table with some water. Luckily for me, he didn't seem surprised to find me there, as he heard me come down in the middle of the night. So the wolf didn't ask me anything about it. He just asked me if I was okay, and I told him that I was. I half lie, I half lie if you want to label it that way. But he didn't mind since he asked no more questions after that. Eventually we had breakfast, spent all morning outside, and just finished eating our lunch. I'm leaning on a wall waiting for a callus outside of a bookstore. He asked me to wait for a while since he wished to buy a particular novel, which he won't name for some reason. I wonder if it's some ultra-secret Grandmaster mystery book that I can't know about. It only makes me want to read it even more. Thank you, Mr. Malice. You're always so nice. I hear a callus near the front door. Seems like they finally decided to move from the back of the store. I hope he's almost done. Because I've been stuck for here for almost half an hour. Uh, it was my pleasure having you here, my lord. As it was mine to be here. And don't forget, I was never here. Yes, yes, like always, my lord. My lips are a tomb. Heh, <laughs> by the sound of his voice, the statement is not so far from reality. After all, he sounds really old. And Lord Akalis, please do come back. You make these old bones really happy. I will. Have a good day. After that, they end the conversation, and as soon I hear the ringing bell from the opening door. So, are you ready? Indeed. We can move on now. Thank you for waiting. Don't mention it. Let's go, yeah? We get a motion, walking through the street without a fixated route. We're just browsing, as the rich say. Akalis seems quite content with what he just bought, and seeing him like that gives me another reason to ask him. What's in the bag? It's nothing, really. Don't trouble yourself with it. Aw, oh, come on. We're buds, right? Throw me a bone here. Uh, a bone? What I mean is that you can trust me. I know it's top secret, but I won't say a word. I promise. The wolf debates with himself for a while, opening his mouth multiple, time, multiple times to say something. I keep staring daggers at him, trying to pressure him to tell me. Eventually he gives in, and with a deep sigh, he opens the bag and shows me the front of the brown book with the golden ornaments. You're such a kid. Ignore him, I take the book from his hands and inspect it, reading the title from the first page. The Great Adventures of Captain Von Kidd, The Pirate That Sailed the Sky by Robert Doroma. This is a... fantasy novel? I feel a little disappointed that this is the ultra-secret book, but when I notice how red Akalis' face is right now... I don't get it. What's so weird about this book? I just... I'm not supposed to read these kinds of books. It's not expected of me. But I find them pleasant and relaxing, so I indulge myself from time to time. Are you not supposed to? Think about my position for a second. I'm the Grand Master of the Royal Library. I'm supposed to be the most knowledgeable person in the entire kingdom. So if my family found me wasting my time like this, it would at best punish me by my lack of responsibility. He sighs hard and places his hand on his face, rubbing, my, rubbing his eyes. I place my hand on his shoulder and offer him a reassuring pat on the back. Well, since I'm an accomplice in your crime now, how about I come by? I'll come and buy them for you. That way you don't risk it, and perhaps we can read them together? Akalis looks at me with a shocked expression before turning his gaze away from my eyes. Th that would be... inefficient. I read way too fast. You could never catch on. I can't help but laugh, even though he's technically insulting me. Oh? Is that a challenge? No, that was not a min- uh, Let's just go. The wolf sighs deeply, and I can't help but chuckle at his antics. He goes, he can be so easy at some times. We walk for the longer. The wolf doesn't seem especially interested in anything, but he's nice enough to wait for me whenever I see something that I like at the store. He even convinced me to buy some to not buy unnecessary things multiple times. Although that golden eagle would look freaking rad on top of my bed. Just saying. Perhaps we should leave. I don't trust you with your own money. Hey, I'm just looking, man. Give me a break. Besides, this is the first time I get to spend it in silly stuff. I mean it, Ellie. Eli. I mean it, Eli. We're not here to buy anything expensive. Wait. Hold up. A certain scent picks up my interest, something I've smelled before. It's faint, but I can certainly recognize it, so I start to follow it, using my nose as my guide. A callus reluctantly falls behind me, grunting from time to time. I keep sniffing until the smell grows stronger, and then I follow it. We reach a building named The Good Buns, that display different types of bread and sweets. From which I can see... 
Hey, Akalis, isn't this... Labrum, how did you know? Of course, I knew that I'd smelled something like this before. As if I could ever forget such an angelical scent. It was here where I bought the other where I bought it the other day, but how did you know? Heh, <laughs> don't you ever underestimate the power of my nose, do you hear me? Quite impressive, like a hound dog. Hey, who are you calling a dog? Bite me. No doubt for a second of my... And don't come back here until you've learned how to count! Our conversation is suddenly cut short by a man yelling at a young red fox. Uh, chef! Yes, Chef! Uh, I'll make it better next time, Chef! The poor teenager seems to be on the verge of collapse as the other man scolds him. I feel a little bad for him, but it's not our place to intervene. It also reminds me of the many times Mr. 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 Mrs. Biscotti scolded me when I was younger. Now! Go and buy some eggs! We'll have to do everything from the start! Y chef! Yes, Chef! The fox bows deeply and then sprints off to the store like a thunder. He's so fast it didn't even take him ten seconds to round the corner and vanish from sight. Ah! Customers! The man finally spots us, walks closer and meets face to face with us. Oh, wow. The man is a... dog? With a fur pattern that I've never seen in my entire life. Can fur be that pink? I hardly believe it. He greets us with a smile and I finally notice how small he is. He's probably the same height as Pat, if not smaller. Please, come in, and sorry about the mess. We just had a failed experiment. He offers us an apologetic smile as he scratches the back of his head. The poor man looks like he hasn't slept in ages now that I look closer. His eyes have deep bags under them. We were looking to buy some love laprum. I point toward this piece of candy on the shelves. The man looks right at it and nods. Of course you do. It's one of our most popular products. You want it to go, or will you gentlemen eat it here? Want to eat it here? Sure. We can rest our legs for a while. And sit wherever you like and enjoy. He handles he handles a he handles us each a stick with a candy on top of it, then he smiles and walks to the back of the store. Man, I've been dreaming about this since the last time. You mean that time you ate the whole thing? Yeah, since that time. And the bill is on me, by the way. Of course it is. So, shall we? I nod enthusiastically before sinking my teeth into the candy. I closed my eyes to focus on the taste better, and oh boy was it a good idea. Just as I remember, the sweet dissolves inside my mouth to the touch, the taste of lemon and milk in a perfect balance, making it sweet and yet acidic enough to make it pleasant. I let out a little moan, and to my surprise the wolf did the same a few seconds after. It seems easy it seems like he's just as much of a fan of it as I am. Aw Oh my. That's a popsicle. Game that is a popsicle. YouTube that is a popsicle. Or, right, piece of candy. It's a piece of candy. When I open my eyes, I can see a callus with a huge smile on his face. He's sucking on the candy slowly, using his tongue to give to give, to give the sweet circular licks. <laughs> and like me, who just ate the whole thing right away. I remain in a trance, seeing how the wolf treats the little prom. Then it hits me. Doesn't it look... Ugly sexual? Before I can continue that line of thought, the wolf turns his gaze towards me, raising an eyebrow. Something the matter? Akalis glares at me, holding holding my gaze as he licks his candy. No, not at all. I was, um... Come on, Ellie, think of something. He can never know how sexual his way of licking is. Here, you have a little stain on your cheek. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I say the first thing that comes to my mind, then I reach my arm and place it on his cheek. The f his fur is extremely soft and well-capped, making it pleasant to the touch. So I linger a little on his cheek, not retracting my hand from his face. There. As clean as before. The callus looks away, his cheeks and ears his cheeks and ears entirely red. That's when it hits me. Did I just tenderly caress another guy's cheek in public? Um, I uh I'm so I take my hand away, not wanting to make him any more uncomfortable than he probably already is. I want to say something, but words get stuck in my throat. <laughs> Thank you. I hate when candy stains my fur. The callus finally says as he offers me a shy smile that makes me that makes me skip a beat. How can this guy get even cuter? His power is too much for my mortal eyes. I'm not worthy. I should go and get clean either way, or else I'll smell like candy for the rest of the day. Be right back. Before I could even say another word, a callus was already standing up and walking toward the bathroom. He 
closed the door behind him, leaving me all alone with my thoughts. Or thought is the only thing in my mind is how stupid I was. He didn't seem mad. That's probably because he didn't want to cause me to cause a scene in public. Ugh, so messed out. What am I going to do? It was a good try, but that move you pulled wasn't the smoothest. Try a leg touch first and see how it goes. Huh. It seems like the type of guy who takes things slowly. Oh my god. X? Excuse me? I'm just saying, you're being too aggressive. Perhaps something more subtle will do the trick next time. The baker, talking to me from the back of the corner, offers me a th offers a thumbs up and a lo and a, to me in a knowing smile. To be honest, I have no idea what he means. I'm not sure I follow you, man. Are you? Aren't you two going out? I sure thought you two were. My cheeks grow red as tomatoes as the man seems serious about what he just said. The worst thing is, from his perspective, it would look like that's the case. After all, I bring him here to eat candy together, I clean his face tenderly, and then we both blush from it. It looked entirely like a date, and I just realized it. No, it's not what it looks like. We're just friends. Relax, no need to get all red on me. I won't tell a soul about it. You have my word. Also, if I, may say, if, if I say something that bothers you, let me know. I wouldn't want to hurt your sensibility by mistake. I remain silent as the baker talks. He seems nice, and he is openly talking about this, which allows me to draw two conclusions. First, he's either gay or sympathetic with the queer. And second, he's got no sense of shame whatsoever. I'm still debating if that's a bad thing or a good thing. I know it seems like it, but I'm telling you the truth. We're just friends. Hmm, is that so? You two got me fooled. The dog laughs at me and I sigh. At least it looks like he's enjoying himself. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.